Hello guys, welcome back. This is the last part for solving the Poisson equation based on MPI. We will provide a final workable parallel program for solving the Poisson equation. Firstly, let's review our path towards this video. We first discuss how to use MPI to generate match and coordinates for every cell in a parallel program. Then we discuss how to get the rank ID of the neighbor cells in a parallel program. Next, we explain how to solve the Poisson equation by serial program. Then we provided first version of the parallel program. In that program, one process will update one cell. In this video, we will provide the final version of the parallel program. In this program, one process can update multiple mesh cells, and we call that a data block. All links about these videos are listed below. Let's go back to the program. The steps in main function keep same with the previous one. We still need to exchange data and iterate the cell value, then calculate the error at the start or end of each iteration. One important distinction is different views of the data index. For this example, if the figure in the center position is the global mesh, and different color represents the data block in different process, Every block is indexed by the coordinates in block level. In this example, we have four blocks. Besides, we also have the local view of seal in each block. For the seal at the bottom right corner, if we consider it in a global view, the index is 4, zero. If we consider it in a local view, it is block 2, and the local index for this seal in this block is 1, zero. For the left seal labeled in the figure, if we consider it in the local view, it is block 3 with index 0, zero. The corresponding index in a global view is 0, 2. Therefore, in our program, it is crucial to provide the transform functions to change index between the global view and the local view conveniently. Another thing is about the ghost value. For every data block, we still need to provide the ghost area around this data block. The ghost value will be updated by their neighbor blocks. If the local size of mesh is n times n for one data block, the actual data size will be the n plus 2 times n plus 2. We also need to provide the space for the ghost area. Let's dive into the actual program. This is the main data structures used in every MPI process. New seal value and seal value are arrays to store the data block and the ghost values. For every iteration, the new seal value will be updated based on the seal value. The ghost value stored at the seal value array will be updated by the neighbor data blocks. Besides, the FB array stores the right side of the equation. The exact values is used for checking the results, and the offsite is used to transform the index from the local view to the global view. The block X and Y are the index for the every data block, and the neighbor block IDs are also need to be stored by each process. Another important issue is how to exchange data efficiently. The ghost area may not continue in memory space. If the data is stored in the raw major, the ghost area in x direction is continuous, and the ghost area in the y direction is incontinuous. Therefore, we can use the MPI type vector to customize the data layout. For this example, we define the y edge type as the MPI type vector. The block number is 1, and the thread length is n plus 2. By this way, we can extract the elements at the direct y direction and put it together in a logical view. The code of the ghost data exchange will be simplified by using the customized type. We can just reuse the original send and receive function with this new data type instead of writing a large for loop to select proper value by ourselves. This method is also used for three-dimension cases. 
the ghost area will be a phase in that scenario. It is worth noting that the step of data exchange is always the first thing in iteration. After this step, the ghost value included in the sale value array is updated. Then, we can use the sale value to update the new sale value. Then, when every element are updated, we can copy it to the original sale value array. The last important thing, let's check the performance of the parallel program with different configurations. In this figure, the mesh size is 1600 times 1600, and the x-axis represents the number of the local size. The number in the processes represent the number of the MPI process. The y-axis represents the time spent on the execution. There is an obvious decrease when we increase the process number from 1 to 4, and the time also decreases from around 1 second to the 0.1 second. After this point, the line becomes flattened gradually. If we continue to increase the process number, the execution time even starts to increase. This is because the overhead of the communication becomes heavy, and the bottleneck of the program becomes the communication instead of the computing in this case. In summary, it is efficient to use parallel program, and it is also non-trivial to write a parallel program. We need to get there step by step. For the future video, we may explore how to update the MPI program or use the GPU to write the parallel program. Thanks for watching. See you next time.